Now, here's a seasick question, okay? And before we go through it together, this is just a part of the question. So I'm going to put the full question on the right. And I want you to just look through it just to get the sense of it, read through it. And if you want, you can even try it out on your own. And then we're going to discuss it together. So go ahead, take a few minutes. All right. So let's get into it. So it says that a farmer grows X acres of peas and Y acres of tomatoes. He has 12 acres available to plant peas and tomatoes. Write an inequality in X and Y to satisfy this condition. So if we think about it, right, it says he has 12 acres available, 12 acres available. So he couldn't plant more than that 12 acres. So whatever he's planting would have to be less than or equal to the 12. He has X acres of peas and Y acres of tomatoes. So in all, that would be X plus Y, right? And all of that has to be less than or equal to 12. Next, it says that the farmer must plant at least two acres of peas and at least three acres of tomatoes. Write two inequalities to satisfy these conditions. So the very fact here that we see at least, okay, so he has, it has to be at least two acres of peas. It's going to be two acres or more. So that means the peas, which is X, would have to be greater than or equal to two, because at least tells us greater than or equal to. And likewise, at least three acres of tomatoes means that Y is going to be greater than or equal to three. Now, it says next that the number of acres of tom tomatoes planted must not be more than twice the number of acres of peas planted. Tomato, tomato. You know. So we want to write an inequality in X and Y to satisfy this condition. Now let's reason it out. Let's break it down. So we're saying that the number of acres of tomatoes planted. Remember that acres of tomatoes is Y, right? So the number of acres of tomatoes planted must not be more than must not be more than so that means it has a limit or it can't be greater than that so that means it's going to be less than or equal to whatever that is so it must not be more than twice the number of acres of peas planted so whatever the acres of peas planted which we know as x okay then this must not be more than twice that. So it must not be more than twice that, or two times x. Therefore, our inequality is basically saying y must be less than or equal to 2x. So now that we have that, now that we have those inequalities, number four is asking us to use a scale of one centimeter to represent one acre on each axis to draw graphs of the inequalities we have just come up with. So you're going to want to use your graph paper for this one. I already have my graph right here, so I'm going to use it. And we are going to want to plot those four lines on the graph. X plus Y is less than or equal to 12. X is greater than or equal to 2. Y is greater than or equal to 3. And y is less than or equal to 2x. Now, if you look at part 5 of the question, it's, very, it's something that we have to keep in mind because it says, by shading the unwanted region, label as S the region which satisfies all four inequalities. So basically, usually we would shade the, the, the region that satisfies it. Now we're going to shade the unwanted region. So of course, we're going to plot our lines for each and then we're going to figure out which side of it is the unwanted side or the side that will not satisfy the inequality and then shade that, okay? So let's see. It, it says x plus y is less than or equal to 12. So I'm going to need two points to plot my line here. Um, let's say that x is 12, okay? Then y would be 0 for that line. So I know that I'm going to have the point 12, 0. So 12, 0, that would be right here. Next, it says that y, let, let me try another point. So let me say 6 plus 6 would give me 12, too, right? 
So that means 6, 6 is going to be on the line as well. So 6, 6, that's going to be right here. So let me draw my line. That would be right here. So that would be the line x plus y is equal to 12. Oh, it had a little shift. Let me fix that. Okay. And I want to shade the unwanted region. So let me just pick a point anywhere um, on my line. So let me pick a point over here, for example. Right. So this point is 12, 4. If I compare that to the inequality, is 12 plus 4 less than or equal to 12? No. So that means this side of the inequality is the unwanted side. So that means I can shade this side over here. Now, let me see what's going on in my next inequality. It says x is greater than or equal to 2. For any line that is in the form x is equal to something, it's going to be a vertical line at that ordinate. So here x is 2. So it's going to be a vertical line right here. So I can draw that line. If it's saying that x is greater than or equal to 2, then my unwanted region would be less than or less than 2. So that would be over here, okay? Because all of these x points are less than 2. So that means my unwanted region is going to be over here. That kind of got in the way. Now, y is greater than or equal to 3. That's our third line. So y is going to be a horizontal line where all the y ordinates are 3. So that's going to be right here. Okay, so if I draw my line, okay. Oops, that came off. Let me set it properly. Then my unwanted region is going to be anything that is less than 3. Again, so that would be down here. Right. Now, finally we have our line y is less than or equal to 2x. So let's plot the line y is equal to 2x. Let me choose some points. Uh, when, when x is 1, right, then y would be 2 times 1. So y would be 2. Okay, so I would have the point 1, 2. So 1, 2. That would be right here. When x is 3, right, when x is 3, then y would be 2 times 3, which is 6. So that means 3, 6 is going to also be on the line. So 3, 6, which is going to be right here. So now that I have those points, if I were to draw my line, it would go through both of them here. right? And my unwanted region is going to be greater than or equal to 2x. So if I choose a random point again, so let me say I choose a point right here. And check if it satisfies the inequality. This point would be 1, 8. So if x is 1, is 8 less than or equal to 2 times 1? No. So this side, this side on this side of the line is my unwanted region. So that's the region that I'm going to shade. So let me just shade it. Let me just shade it right here. So we have shaded all of our unwanted regions and the question asks us to label as s the region that satisfies all four so now you realize that that would be the region right in here bounded by these four points so this is my wanted region or my feasible region as we had said earlier now if we move on to the next part of the question, it says that the farmer makes a profit of $75 on each acre of peas and $50 on each acre of tomatoes. Write an expression in X and Y for the total profit, P, which may be earned, <coughs> sorry about that, which may be earned on the peas and the tomatoes. So we need an expression in X and Y for the total profit, right? So let, let's reason that out a little bit. Let's think about what it's saying. So if we make 75 on each acre, that means if it was one acre, it would be 75 times 1. 
If it was two acres, it would be 75 times two. So now for x acres, for the expression, for x acres, which means any amount of acres, it would be 75 times x. Likewise, we can then say that for each acre of tomatoes, it's going to be 50 times whatever amount, which would be y. So the total profit would be both of these together, which would be equal to 75x plus 50y. And that is our profit function. That tells us our total profit. Now the second one says to use the graph to determine the number of acres of peas and tomatoes the farmer should plant in order to make maximum profit. So let's go back to our graph. Remember that we said the optimal points usually lie at the corner of our feasible region. So if you notice here, at our corners, we have this point, which would be 2, 3. We have this point, which would be 2, 4. This one up here, which would be 4, 8. Okay. And then this one, which would be 9, okay, and then 3. So we have our four points, and we need to figure out which one makes the maximum profit. Now let's think about it, right? We know that these two points, 2, 4, and 2, 3, they're unlikely to give us the maximum profit because they're not even maxing out the, the, the amount of acres that can be used on the land. So that means our answer has to lie either between 4, 8 or 9, 3. If we look back on our profit function, X or the acres of peas cost $75. So they are more exp or they earn us more profit than our acres of tomatoes. So since the peas cost more or earn more profit, the one with more peas or the point with more peas is likely to give us the maximum profit. And if you notice here, that would be 9, 3. Because this point is saying that we have 9 acres of peas and 3 acres of tomatoes. If you're not sure if it would be this or 4, 8, there's nothing wrong in testing both. You can look at that for yourself. And we can even test it too, just to be sure that that is the 9 acres of peas and 3 acres of tomatoes. So if we are testing the points, so let's say that we are testing both points. If we were to use the point 4, 8, then the profit would be 75 times 4 plus 50 times 8, right? 75 times 4, that's 300. 50 times 8 is 400. And 300 plus 400 would be $700 in profit. If we test 9, 3, okay, that's going to be 75 times 9 plus 50 times 3. 75 times 9 is 675. 50 times 3, let me write that here. 50 times 3 is 150. And 675 plus 150 eventually works out to give us 825. So as you can see here, 93 does indeed give us the maximum profit. Which would make sense because if we want to make the maximum profit, we would just plant more of what gives us the most money. So finally, we're stating the maximum profit, which is kind of what we did over here. Right? So the maximum profit that can be earned is $825.